Hey, Mr. Myers is here, and in this one, I'm just going to go over some basic uh, rules, basic probability rules that we uh, we see a lot. Um, and then later on, I'll talk about some more examples, and we'll just keep chugging along with probability. So here's some basic rules that you know. If you looked at my last video, I talked about the law of large numbers in the long run that our experimental probability will end up uh, equaling our theoretical probability. Now, in order to find the probability of any event, we're going to take uh, the probability of any event is equal to the uh, number of desired outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. All right, that's pretty much it. So this is basic probability that you've seen in the past. Probability can either be written as fraction, decimals, or percentages. It can never be less than zero, um, less than zero or greater than one. It could be zero or one, but it can't be less than that. And on top of that, um, all of the probabilities, the sum of the probabilities must be equal to one. So in, uh, in, other, word, in other words, um, one of the rules that we have is called the um, complement rule. The complement rule. And the complement rule says that 1 minus the probability of something happening is equal to the probability of that thing not happening. And I'll show you an example of that in just a second. Lastly, two events are called disjoint or mutually exclusive if they can't happen at the same time. So basically, if I can't... Um, get a, um, a heads um, and uh, roll a six with a coin, <laughs> they're called mutually exclusive. Okay, so if I can't get it at the same time, then it's mutually exclusive. Let's take a look at some examples of it. Or we got two more actually, and some examples to follow that. So um, two of the big important probability rules here are the addition rule. And the addition rules for independent events, it looks like this. If I have two events, the probability of A or, this is this little thing here is a union, it means or, the probability of A or B happening is, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B happening separately. All right, so in, in, uh, in essence, an or statement in probability means to add, okay? Or means to add. So let's take a look at that, what an example of that. What is a probability we draw a king or a 10? Well, in a standard deck of cards, the probability that we draw a king is four kings out of 52 cards. The probability that we draw a 10 is four tens out of 52 cards. So the probability we draw a king or a 10 is four 50 seconds plus four 50 seconds, which is eight over 52, which simplifies to two thirteenths. All right. The multiplication rule says that if we have the probability of A and and B happening, we're going to multiply those probabilities. And this this is either independent or dependent. It works the same way. So what is the probability we draw a king and a 10? The probability that we draw a king is 4 out of 52. The probability that we draw a 10 is 4 out of 52. And the and means multiply. So I'm going to multiply those together. It's easiest if we simplify these to 1 13th times 1 13th, which gives me 1 over 169. Okay, so the probability of the multiplication rules for and, two events happening at and, or one event and another event, and then the uh, addition rules for things or. So let's take a look at a couple more examples using all these, all of these. Let's say I roll a fair dice. So a fair dice has six sides. What's the probability that I roll a three or a four? Well, the probability that I roll a three is one sixth. The probability that I roll a four is one sixth. And the probability of both of three or a four, I'm going to add. So the probability of one sixth plus one sixth is two sixth, which is one third. What's the probability I do not roll a three? So this is the probability of not getting a three. And by the complement rule, that's one minus the probability of getting a three. So one minus, what's the probability of getting a three? That's one sixth. So that is going to give me five sixths. So what's the probability I roll twice and I get a three, then a four? So what's the probability of getting a three? That is one sixth. What's probably getting a four? A one sixth. And a then is the same thing as an and, because I gotta get I gotta get both of these true. So that's multiplication. I'm using the multiplication rule. 
So that's 1 out of 36. What's the prob probability that I roll three times and I get all three threes? Okay, so what do I get first? I get a three. So what's the probability of getting that? That's one sixth. What do I get second? I get another three. The probability of getting that is one sixth. And I get third, another three, which a probability is one sixth. So I'm gonna multiply all these because I gotta get all of them, right? That's an and statement. That's the multiplication property. So one sixth times one sixth times one sixth is one sixth to the third power, which is one over 216. That's my probability of getting all threes on a fair dice in a row. Okay, there you go. Those are some basic probability rules that we use often in probabilities. Talk to you soon, guys, or I'll see you soon. Bye.